my research project, as you can tell from the poster title, is the light activated manipulation of liquid crystals using a BF2 coordinated azo complex, which is basically built from the idea that, um, well, as chemists, we like to approximate the complexity and self organization of biological systems using like far simpler, more elegant systems. And one method of control of such control is using a molecular switch, which is essentially a molecule that possesses two stable states, it's bistable, and can be toggled between those two states using irradiation, in this case light, coordination of metal, changes in pH, or actual electrochemical potential. The question for me as a chemist was to see how I could take this molecular switching event and propagate it to the mesoscopic and then macroscopic level. What I used essentially was a liquid crystal system. I used took advantage of cholesteric liquid crystals, or chiral aromatics, which essentially are capable of selectively reflecting light and the color of the light they reflect is dependent on the pitch, which is in turn dependent on the molecule that's inside the liquid crystal, and that modulates the pitch of it. And so if you take a molecule like a molecular switch and you dope it in liquid crystal, and it's capable of changing from one state to another, you're essentially changing the color of the liquid crystal and therefore having a macroscopic event from this molecular switching event. And this, of course, was yeah, relevance for control of soft matter from, I don't know, people have like, camouflage cars these days, so stuff like that. <music> Professor Abrahamian was my advisor, and I initially, I was afraid that I wasn't going to put enough time into research, so I chose him to be my advisor because I'd heard around the word on the street is that he's really scary, and he ended up being like one of the nicest, funniest people in the chem department, so working with him was always, yeah, a joy. He always managed to inspire us to work a little harder. And my project was I pulled bits from the work that everybody in the lab group was doing. Gain, one of our lab members, worked with light-activated systems. Another member worked with liquid crystals, but pH-based um, systems. And so I was basically pulled from everyone else's work from my project. And so it was sort of a group effort, I guess. I constantly went in a circle, running around asking all of them questions. I think they'll be glad to be rid of me in the end. I guess the nature of research itself in that in the classroom I've always found that when I don't understand something in chemistry or even in classics, if I work hard I'm capable of figuring it out and making it work on paper. And so doing research that just doesn't happen. I could put hours in and nothing would work and then something I would do in five minutes would magically work. And I found that very uncomfortable that I wasn't able to control my results. One of my professors phrased it, well, in the classics department actually, phrased it as like living on the edge of knowledge. You don't know what's going to happen next or how it's going to happen. You're sort of charting the unknown. And for me, that uncertainty was always, is, still is, a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. So translating, I guess, from the classroom to research and where you go from there. Making the poster was fun. Uh, the presentation itself relied on basically your ability to condense like your hundred or so pages of thesis research down into a five minute spiel that they as professors from across I guess various disciplines would understand and appreciate as well um, and I'm not necessarily the most short-winded so that was that was a challenge but also fun and seeing how capable they were of like engaging with the work and enjoying it as well um, I, I wasn't there when they announced the winners, so I showed up, went back to my poster, and was like, oh, there's a, a little paper yeah, ribbon on it. This is nice. People always say that you shouldn't do research or write a thesis unless you love what you're doing and know what it's going to be and can commit to that. But, I mean, going in, I had been working on so many different projects in the lab. None of them had been working. I started writing my thesis, I kind of had no idea what I was doing, and I think that for me was part of the joy, was like pushing myself to figure out like, oh, how do you write a science paper, or how do you make a project work, and then write about that. So I found that writing a thesis like in and of itself was fulfilling, even if I wasn't, I didn't love the work when I started, I just didn't, I didn't know enough to love it, you can't really know, but like I learned to love it as I was doing it, and so I think that, I don't know, I would add that caveat to that, I guess. I'll be in England next year studying, getting a master's in chemistry at the University of Cambridge, and then, well, while applying to MD-PhD programs here in the States. <laughs>